Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Koviak. Today we're going to take a look at some uh, a major factor that a lot of people don't take into consideration, and that is why uh, on close range shots you may not get the penetration that you think you do, and it happens quite often um, <clears throat> in 150 to 170 whatever it is animals that I've killed with a longbow the majority of those have been probably in the 8 to 12 yard range okay some of them as close as two yards away um when i've only been up you know five feet about you know about as high as this is here stand height wise and shooting them right here um so i've shot deer at all different levels and the farthest one probably being a pig that i killed this year on my whatever it was the third v log the one i shot across the water which i guess was probably 25 26 27 yards i couldn't measure it because of the water but i'm guessing it was somewhere right near that's probably the farthest i've ever ever shot at an animal um with the exception of a groundhog once but i killed that groundhog at about 45 yards at a at an archery range um but for the most part shooting so many differences the distances and killing a lot of animals you learn different things and when they're close sometimes you don't get as good of a penetration you don't get that pass through like you're hoping for and there's factors to that that, uh, that contribute that not many people are aware of and uh, it can happen but there's a big difference in what the arrow is doing see when you shoot a traditional bow unlike a compound unlike even a center shot recurve but when you're shooting a long bow that is not center shot and I want to point this at you. Let's take a look at that angle of where that arrow is. Okay, see how that arrow is off to the side? It is not straight in line. If I put that string, should be right there. That string should be directly down the center of the limbs. And look at the angle the arrow is pointing at, okay? If I'm, I'm, if I'm holding that correct, that, that string is right through the middle of the riser. True center shot and should be going straight into the screen and look at where the arrow is pointing. Okay, the reason for that is is because it's not center shot. You can see it even in the angle when you look at that and you line that string up down the center of that and you look at where that arrow is pointing, it's not pointing straight by. It has to get around this. Even if I show it to you from reverse, let's see if you can pick that up. I'm going to just keep moving it so you can kind of line up where that string. Let me see if I get that string to center out perfect in there. Look at the angle of that arrow when we keep that string in the center of the limb. See how it's pointing off to the side? Okay, so what happens is this archer's paradox, this arrow has to bend around. So when you shoot this, this arrow is going to come off of this bow and it is going to flex in like this and then flex out to wrap around this riser. It is going to, that arrow is actually going to go like this around that riser and straighten out okay we know that archer's paradox it's going to come out and it's going to go around and it's going to fishtail its way out of there that's how it clears a riser all right and that's how you can see here i got a marking on here too if i shoot in weird angles or i short draw I don't get that i don't get full extension in what happens or if i torque my arm i'll end up that arrow will rub against that shelf when it does uh and then if you you know you're going to hit it here where it's going to pop out and flex and then it's going to bump against there or it could even bump and catch along the back here could you know rub against there as it comes out it's all part of the game again if you shoot only at targets and you shoot perfect form every single time you're probably not going to have that kind of wear on there when you practice bow hunting situations and weird angles and shooting off your weak side you get that kind of stuff because you're not getting that true perfect arrow flight that comes into play and you're, like i said you're going to get stuff like that that's going to happen but the biggest factor is that the arrow has to flex okay that arrow i'm gonna take that tab right off too but that arrow has to flex around that riser so when you shoot it is going to go and me as a lefty as i see it it goes in and bends so that you know here's the bow right here on this side it is going to go in and then out as it passes by there and then come back in and does this and it's going to do this down range so what I did is I set up, and I have some slow motion videos here I'm going to show you in a second, from my point of view shooting at 20, 15, 10, and 5 yards, and then also from the target watching the arrow come in from 20, 15, 10, and 5 yards. Slow motion, uh, and uh, what we're going to see is we're going to see that that arrow at five yards is still doing a lot of this porpoising as it's coming down range. When you hit an animal... And you hit that, uh, we're just going to use this as an example. When you hit that animal and it hits, if that arrow is still doing this, it, it struggles to get through here. Okay, it's that kind of effect. It comes in and it hits. If it's still wobbling and, and porpoising like this and trying to straighten itself out as it's doing this, when it hits and hits that impact, it is going to wobble 
through like this and that's going to limit the penetration. When you get back there at 10 yards, instead of wiggling like this and doing it, it's now slowed down and starting to wiggle out. And now it's just a little bit more of a wiggle. I'm stuck, but it just wiggles through a little better. When you're at 15 yards, you've pretty much almost cleared that. Now you still have some oscillation. Don't think you don't. You still do. You got some oscillation coming through there, but it's going to start slowing tremendously. And by 20 yards, you're pretty much a straight shot. And now that arrow is a straight one. I'll get my shirt out of the way. But as a straight hit, when it hits, because it's not rocking or oscillating, it just goes right through real easy but on the other ones it has this wobble that it has to contend with as it goes through that hole that wobble is going to rob tremendous energy out of your arrow so it's not uncommon on closer hits where you are literally right here and you are going to shoot them at five yards three yards eight yards that kind of thing it is not uncommon for that arrow to still be Porpoising as it goes down there and when it hits it's got to wiggle its way through that now when you get out there further it can just push right through because it's going straight if we turn that sideways and try to push I can't really you know you can't you can see here like that I mean you can see it just wiggles it's harder to get through or if it's going straight it drops right through whereas if it's wiggling Okay, you struggle, you lose that energy trying to wiggle that oscillation through the animal. That's what causes that. So don't be alarmed if, you know, you shoot at three deer um, over a year or two, or whatever, but three deer, you shoot them at 15, 18, 20 yards, and you zip, zip right through them, and it's sticking in the ground on the other side, and then you have one at five yards, and you shoot, and you only get half shaft in there, and he runs off with that shaft sticking out. You didn't do anything wrong. Your bow didn't do anything wrong. You're just contending with that arrow flash as it goes in hitting that and it just can't fight its way through there very very common at close distances okay your arrow just doesn't have the recovery time uh, to get away from that yet so in carbon recovers pretty quick aluminum recovers almost as quick pretty good not quite as good and um, a uh, uh, wood arrows recover the slowest. They're still beautiful. I'm not taking anything away from wood. Don't don't think for a second I'm knocking them. They're amazing. Um, but even a skinnier, like I'm shooting a full-size carbon. This is a 246 inside diameter carbon. And uh, so what we call regular carbon. And it is not going to perform as good as the micro carbons, the smaller skinny shafts. They are more center shot. They don't have to flex as much and they will uh, recover quicker. So it's all a personal preference on that stuff. I just don't want you getting into a a fear factor of uh, what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead. I mean, it's normal. Okay. It's what I'm trying to tell you. At close ranges, you may not get full penetration or not get the penetration you're used to. It is common. I don't care what bow weight you shoot. I've seen 75 pound guys shooting or 75 pound bows. Boom. And it sticks out and it's got that much shaft running as that animal runs off. Okay. It's completely normal. You're dealing with heavy oscillation. Um, so I'm about to show you these videos and I'll probably put some narration under there because I've already shot them, but I don't know how to talk over them while I'm doing this and all that stuff, but you will see it. I will put labels on there, but you're going to see it. Watch and pay attention to not when it hits the target because it's a bag target and it's been shot a little bit. So everything's all mumbled in there. So when it hits the targets, you might see some moving around as it tries to find its way through the fibers. A bag target is a horrible example of a, you know, to try and bear shaft on because it is non-monogenous. Um, material non-homogenous so it's not going it's not you're going to get variations in a target that'll cause that arrow when it hits to do different things what we're looking for is the flight the flight as it goes down range and then the flight as it's coming into the target you're going to see or you're going to see it closer up to that target but watch the flight characteristics of that arrow in slow motion at these different distances so you can see for yourself so we're going to go ahead and play those for you right now and uh thanks for watching and uh, i'm going to start up the slow mo